welcome to Phoenix, Arizona. So I'm shooting a few other videos that show my traveling from the airport in Phoenix to downtown Phoenix. Those will be uploaded separately. Uh, this is my first day here. I just unloaded my stuff and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the train back toward the airport and then past the airport toward Tempe, Arizona where I'm going to try to run a bicycle uh, from a place that I made a reservation at. So we'll see how that goes and I'll splice some little things leading up to that. So just coming outside right now, that was the hotel, the Hyatt Regency. My conference center is actually right across the street. Uh, it spans multiple buildings. I got one, that one, and then it goes further that way. And I'm walking toward the train station. See down that way there's some murals. I'm gonna do a downtown downtown walk uh, at some point during the days that I'm here, but figured uh wanna get the bicycle tonight so that I have it for the other days that I'll be here. I mean, one mental note I have to keep in mind, little tacos. 350 for something. You're amazing, it says, on that mural. <laughs> but yeah, when I'm walking, I wanna, if there's shade, I want to make sure I stay in the shade because this camera can overheat in the sun and affect the footage. little too much music there so I gotta cut the footage in and out. But now I need to figure out where the westbound, I think it would be westbound, or maybe, I don't know, it could be, I shouldn't say that, I don't know what direction is which here. I know I should be on the other side of the street, I think. Where is the train station going the other way? All right, now I see. So the train that I took coming in was on Washington. I assume that the other one would be on Washington also. That's the one I took coming in. But it looks like the next train station is on the following block by the <laughs> basketball arena. The footprint center. And then over on our left you have Taco Bell Cantina. Now I have to find out where the specific boarding station is. Is it to the left or the right? There's the footprint center like I mentioned. Don't think it's over there. I think it's down this way. So I gotta check Google Maps again. Yeah, you gotta walk, it's actually like a block or two away. So that was my mistake on the scouting, assuming that the stations would be right next to each other. <laughs> so it's on the corner of Jefferson and 3rd. And like I said, the footprint center right there. Chase Field, home of the Diamondbacks up ahead. And in between you've got some advertisements for like sports book things and other amenities. And the Phoenix Convention Center extends out to here.
wait. Now we'll just sit here and wait for the train to come. Oh, I do see it in the distance. So here's the eastbound train. I'm not going to film this train ride just because I filmed the entire one for a separate video going from the airport. But just know that I'm taking it out to Tempe. So I guess I got to board it closer down this way. Chase Field at the Solar Pavilion. Looks like a graduation event. Once you get past Chase Field, you sort of like you're exiting the downtown area, so it's not very scenic. Alright, so I'm in Tempe right now. You can see the train that just let us off right there at the ASU Sun Devil Stadium. And you've got one of these like mini mountains that are embedded and you can actually hike this. That's, that's what's crazy. You probably can't tell, but like way up there, there's actually people like climbing up the stairs and you get to the top and then you get a view of the city that's over you. And then you've got airplanes flying by to the Phoenix airport as well. Coming into Phoenix, I saw some of the river and beach front areas, but I didn't film that because it would have been like through the window and I figured, all right, I'll be able to walk through there. So what I'm gonna do now is head to the bicycle shop, which I think is actually right over here. This is like the transportation center. So it's, I think this is a hub where a lot of the buses in the Tempe, for the Tempe circulators, possibly other buses go to. But yeah, yeah, right here, the place that I rented a bike from, the bicycle seller, you can see the sign for it. And the A over there is for Arizona State University in the yellow lettering. So right over here it says Bicycle Center. I made pretty good timing for my reservation. I predicted three o'clock and right now it's 2.51 p.m. Uh, I think they go in, is it here? Maybe it's on the second level. Oh no, it's it's down here in the lower level. All right, I came from the bicycle seller. They rented me this bike. Uh, it's got Powerful light here. I've got to make sure I remove that anytime I park the bike. Kryptonite. There's also a lock and cable in there along with the key. You see the water bottle holder. And yeah. Initially, I think I'm going to walk around instead of riding. Uh, the bike is you have for the duration of the trip as opposed to, you know, riding it around downtown right now because I want to look around and see see right here there's a pizza deli sandwiches shop at the fifth street market let's see how we can do this to make sure we're not being too blinded by the sun one thing i didn't expect is i didn't know there would be as much as many like trees around not that there's a ton of trees. Oh, there are, yeah, a good amount of trees. For some reason, I had this perception that, like, there were going to be no trees here. <laughs> this is the City of Tempe Police and Courts building. Then 
let me stop right here for a bit and pull out Google Maps and just uh, see where I want to go since I got a shady spot. All right, I looked at the map. It's kind of hard to decide which which way I want to go just because like there's things in different directions. Like there's something I want to see towards the north, something towards the south, something towards the west, east. It's not like I can just go from a straight line. But we'll try to make it work and cover as much as we can. The statue for Tempe Normal School. If you hear a clanking, that's the lock inside the bag. So hopefully that's not too annoying on the video. There's that mountain I was referring to earlier. see a fair amount of people riding scooters just in the short time I've been out. Looks like a little hotel resort. Tempe Mission Palms. And then coming up here is the first thing I wanted to check out. Mill Avenue. And we're sort of starting in the middle of Mill Avenue. We'll see how much of it we can cover on both sides. It seemed like a very vibrant street with a lot of restaurants and shops on it. You see, it's funny, at the barber shop they got a chessboard out while you're waiting. Here's Mill Avenue. What I think I'm gonna do is walk this way down Mill. And then eventually I'll circle back on the other side of the street where there's shade and I'll walk the full length on that side so you can see there's Cornish pastry seems like a bar but maybe they, it's like a pastry bar place Taco Bell cantinas must be popular down Arizona it's the second one I've heard of already high smoke shop maintenance In a shop, you have various clothing and that style of merchandise inside. Nice to see a lot of people out and about. And you can see even the, the map here talks about Mill Avenue and some of the resting spots throughout the city. There's supposed to be a fair amount of artwork tucked away, although I don't think there's like an arts district per se. I think you just have to uh, pay attention and be looking at it. Just gotta snack, gotta remember to snack some pictures here as I'm going along. By the way, that mountain up there is officially called the Hayden Butte, or Hayden Butte, however you pronounce it.
Yeah, I mean, that little red, that mountain area thing looks like it'd be fun to hike up. It wouldn't take super long. The only thing is, since I have the bike, you're, well, A, you're not allowed to take bicycles there, but B, I don't know if I want to go through the hassle of locking it up. And that seems like something where if I really want to do it, I could probably come back another day. We're crossing 3rd Street, and this is where the train station would have come in. So the stop before I got off was right there. And then I kept on going, and the station that I got off had by the bicycle shop it was just over there. Somewhere up ahead, I believe there's a script sign for Tempe, where you can take the picture. You know, like in this Cleveland, you have all the Cleveland script signs, and in various other cities you're starting, or have been seeing it, pop up more and more. Every city wants to have a little script sign it sort of serves as the welcoming or popular picture spot There's supposed to be a beach park concert, I think a two-day two event at the Tempe Beach Park going on. So that's one of the reasons why you're seeing a lot more people down by this area. Oh, and there's the sign across the street. Let's see here, how do we navigate this crisscross? Wristbands, guys, wristbands! <laughs> so normally you probably wouldn't see much activity over here, but now it's like super busy because of the event going on right there. Popular musicians going to be there. And here's the Tempe sign. No. <laughs> so there's the sign for Tempe. Is there a reason you videotape me? I'd have a YouTube channel where I show off cities and pr promote the promote the the city and, and how it look looks. The scene of the city. Yes. <laughs> Nothing less than sin. I mean, look, we got to call it by its right name. The Bible says, "Call it sin by its right name," and it is. I mean, I'm a sinner. We're all sinners. We oh. <laughs> Just the sightseeing aspect. <laughs> So you got a guy trying to hijack the video, <laughs> asking like, oh, what are you filming? So I was explaining, and he says, oh, you're filming the sinning, sinning, like you're a sinner. He's one of those people that uh, hands out uh, material and tries to preach stuff. I'm going to try to come back later toward that area, but right now I want to cover Mill Street. I'm 
I'm gonna stop the video for a second until I get to the shade because I don't want to burn out the camera getting too hot. All right. Back in the shade now. Again, like I said earlier, I'm gonna try to make a point of that as much as possible when I'm doing videos during this conference weekend. Because there's been times when I'm filming in other cities where I'm filming for like 30 minutes, but my intent is to film for like an hour. And at the 30 minute mark, all of a sudden my device will say overheating and it shuts down for a few minutes. It's usually more so related to being in direct sunlight as opposed to uh, as opposed to the heat. It's really not that hot. It's only 75 degrees, so very pleasant today. See, bars are very popular here. place called the Daily Jam breakfast, lunch and brunch. So I wonder if they may be may be closed for the day. Three o'clock they closed. Yep, it's 326 right now. There's still plenty of other busy spots like you've got Fuzzy's taco shop up here. See a butterfly mural of sorts back there. You'll have to excuse me, the, the sunlight peeking out between some of these street corners. Try to avoid that as much as possible. I'll try to remember that when I'm approaching a corner like that to hold the camera toward the left side. Here's comfort footwear. Another taco shop here on our right. Tijuana style for the tacos, street tacos. Med Fresh Grill. It's a pub and pizza place. Hey there. Then Candy Attic. The sweetest place on Mill, it says. And you've got a clothing shop here. See, this is the area where I love seeing like all the little shops and restaurants all together. Oh, and inside here, Mill Avenue Shops. Well, I don't know if we can take the bike inside because there might be stairs, but let's see here. So it looks like tucked within here you have smaller shops. Just wondering if it goes up the stairs, otherwise we'll just turn around. Yeah, so there's like little shops back here. They do have like a bike rack there, so they don't mind people bringing bikes up here.
little touches like this are cool too, add to the elements. Not all those things are in there, like 14 or a 414 Pub and Pizza and Candy Addict. Those are actually on the street, street side. Crispy Cones looks like it's busy right now with a line going out the door. Eh, it's not too busy actually, it's just a small inside. Then you've got lotions, potions, as well as some postcards. And I'm going to hang back here for a second because doesn't show the walk sign but actually let me peek down here I see a pizza shop oh I don't even know we're underneath a Starbucks coffee right over here is Spinelli's pizza like a fun little vibe inside definitely have to pick a place to eat because I didn't eat lunch lunch today and it's already getting close to evening time across the street there is a United States post office As we're about to pass 5th Street. So now I figured out earlier why I didn't see the crosswalk. It's an all-way cross, so even like diagonally you cross all the intersections go on at one time. Which reminds me of like when you see in those international countries. So this is Thirsty Dog to go. It says hot dogs, beer, urban market. For some reason there's a baseball here, downtown Tempe. <laughs> I don't know the significance of it. But Still gonna take a picture of it. But we keep walking a little bit further. Again, there's the United States Post Office. You have sweet treats here, smoothies, shakes, shaved ice, and waffles. late hours until 11 p.m. to midnight so if they're open that late they must know Mill Avenue often gets good business here's a barber shop and then cactus sports looks like a clothing clothing place for Arizona State that is one of the big things to note is that Arizona State University is one of the biggest colleges in the country I th think I read it maybe like the seventh biggest and a huge portion of the downtown Tempe area is like dominated by Arizona State University even the museums and all that stuff are run by them so I mean it doesn't look like a college crowd out now per se it looks like visitors and people could be going to that uh, beach event but I'm sure that's why a lot of these businesses regularly thrive. I'm not going to point the camera to the right. Because of the big sunlight beam that you would see. Let me try to get a little further here.
Five Guys Burgers and Fries. There's a known national place, and funny enough, it's like the least least busy. Fat Tuesday bar. <laughs> Historic, the handlebar is the next bar here. See a lot of these places also have side patios. Here's a Korean barbecue place. Korean barbecue in a cup. Zips Sports Grill. Live stream. And then you can see you've got the Colorful intersections here. Down there on the right side, you may not be able to see it on the camera, but I see a sign that says AMC, so there may be a movie theater back there. Mellow Mushroom Pizza. It sort of seems to be like the tipping point of where the bigger crowds concluded, but you still have like another university bar here. These places are vacant on the corner. And then I believe these tall buildings are some hotels. Like I see a Westin behind me. There's an Omni Hotel as we're approaching University Avenue. I think it's Avenue. There's a CVS on the corner and then Chick-fil-A over there. So I'm going to cross here, but then I'm going to check Google Maps again. Because I think most of my coverage of Mill is done now, so I want to find out where my next spot is. Alright, so what I'm going to do is walk about three blocks. I'm not going to film it though, because it's like more like dead space, but I want to go to three blocks and then see what the outside of the Arizona State University Art Museum looks like. See if they have any exhibits outside. It is supposed to be free to go inside as well, and they are open, but you know, me Mac trying to maximize time and also video stuff, usually don't uh, video much stuff inside of a museum. So we'll see. So this museum is supposed to be free, the art museum. You can see you've got some artwork outside. And I guess probably when the Super Bowl was here, I would imagine this is when that was installed. Or maybe not, maybe it was different, because I do see... No, it does say 2022.
Yeah, they hosted the Super Bowl last year. I think that was in Glendale. That's where I came from with the football artwork. Found this little passageway over here. Got some cacti, but then I saw a bicycle rack that caught my eye. And it looks like there's some more artwork over here. Let me see if I can lock this up for a second. I have to go right up to this because the sun is behind them. Southwest Pieta. That was a nice quick visit. Uh, the people up front were very nice and helpful. I just quickly saw the first exhibit, Sarah Zapata, Beneath the Breath of the Sun. And then the other one was Twin Flames, a George Floyd exhibit. But like I said earlier, it's one of those things where, you know, <laughs> you're probably not, especially art galleries, are typically not supposed to film in there. I was like nervous just doing the like two or three seconds I shot of each each one but you know it's not meant to steal anything I'm truly truly trying to show off like the experience and just the taste that's why I only do a short very short clip of the art okay now I'm back outside I'm gonna start riding I have this attached to my chest mount the camera this is probably going to be showing small bits of the Arizona State University campus, but nowhere near like, like I, there's so many buildings that it's hard for like to encapsulate it in a tour, especially when you're not familiar with what's what. I'm more so just like driving through and I'm probably doing it at the service. So if you're if you're from Arizona State University, turn left for South Forest Mall, then don't, turn right. don't take insult to this. And I'm only passing through like Cleveland State University, which I've been to many years. It's very easy because everything's concentrated in a small, not small, but like a, the same block. See another artwork piece here. And I guess if I, if you do look, there are some signs for buildings like ASU Farmer Education Building. I'm sure there's other ones that would say that too. So if, it, if I come across anything, I'll try to point it out verbally on the signage. Something called Orange Mall is closed. I like how they have like the various art throughout the campus. Yeah, I, like I said, unfortunately I picked the area that has construction partially going on. I do like how they have a lot of bike racks. So remember, this is a Saturday, so that's why you're not seeing anybody, but look at all these bike racks. And this is just one area. All the other areas had it too. So you can imagine that there must be a huge bicycle presence here on campus. Just grabbing a picture of that because that's always nice to point out. Unique looking bike racks too. I don't know if I've ever seen them like that. It looks like you could stick your tire in there and have two bikes probably locked onto each one. Have like little tables. Stouffer Communication Arts A and B. There is a map here, but <laughs> there's so many symbols and you've got the 
description of what each thing means. Like for example, it looks like we are here, we're next to MCL on our right. What does MCL stand for? McClinton, Mc, McClintock Hall, which I don't even know what that means. But yeah, there's so much. You can see that entire map, all that stuff, and then that's like all campus related stuff. Then up top, kind of where we started by the bicycle shop, that's where that uh, Mountain American Stadium, I believe that's the football field. There's also Packard Stadium, probably where the baseball team, uh, track and field. So they have huge presence. Let me briefly, I'm just, again, I'm trying to go between areas. So now you can see there's Matthews Hall Lyceum Theater on the left. More bicycle racks. Each building is definitely encouraging and promoting bicycles. I'm just not used to a campus like this where it almost looks like a bunch of small high school buildings to be. It's cool how you have cacti throughout it. I'm just going to loop around because this, this part doesn't have construction so I'm going to go this way but then backtrack. Matthew Center, I think I mentioned that earlier. Got the sign for the Hayden Library over there on the right. Oh, well, this is actually the Hayden Library on the left. audio on my phone. I put in a location for uh, Trader Joe's. That's why Google keeps on saying like, where are you going? Looks like you have a nice big atrium here. So when the sun is too hot, you can take in. So I like that for a common, common area. There's also a Starbucks coffee location over there. And I know on the Google Maps there's other other like dining location areas. They may not be open today, but throughout campus there's a presence for that. Let's keep going through and again I'm gonna try to come back around. interdisciplinary B over here on the right it says student services building discovery hall all right so we're going to go ahead and turn around here come back Yeah, my goals for the rest of Tempe, at least initially, are when I had the Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's is a 
fun or silly little tradition that oh by the way sorry not to stop but if I look over there I see it says WP Carey School of Business I'm used to going in Cleveland State where you have yeah like you have your eight main buildings but each building has a huge title on it and everything's inside there I'm not used to there being like all these smaller buildings And the description, you know, there's not like huge labels on a lot of the buildings. Some of them do have bigger labels. It's just a difference in setup and culture. A lot of bikes here, so I assume the Starbucks is open and filled with customers. Okay, let's see here. So we'll head, let's check out the right side here. So that was the Starbucks. I'm not sure if there's any other. With, with how many tables are you? Would think there'd be more uh, dining options. And I think there are. So it looks like inside the, the building on the right, it's like a dining hall or food hall. Again, might not be open today because it being a Saturday. So that makes sense why you have all this outdoor seating because I can even see inside it says like Cubora, Mexican Grill. There, are, there is a couple that came from inside so maybe it is open. Student Pavilion. So maybe that's like a, what, I'm, what I would think of as a student center. See, especially since there's no street view on Google Maps, like going in between all these places, it's really difficult to pre-plan, like, okay, where, where do you start off, like, a little tour of a new university that you've never been exposed to? But now that I've been through it a little bit, granted, there's no way I would remember what I just went through, but I feel like I got somewhat of a grasp of how things are laid out. Oh, this this is pretty cool here. A big palm tree lined walkway. Engineering labs on the right. At least that's what the sign said. I assume the actual building follows suit with that. I think I read online that the Abertorium does all the like landscaping work for the entire university. So all the stuff that you're seeing, kudos to them for getting that all set up and laid out. Yeah, those on the right, again, you can't, I'm, I'm pointing out to them, but it says engineering. These things over here, these are actually like liked, uh, locked bicycle facilities where it sounds like you can really secure your bike by entering your ID card. If you're a student, that's a physical sciences building. Uh, might be a health related building on the left. Health services, yep. And then there's a staircase that goes up there. I think that's just a bridge going over the street. Here, if we can stay on the lower level. I don't know, we'll try it. Maybe we can. It's kind of unusual how they have, like, why do they have five stairs to begin with? 
and then the walkway. Maybe they want to make sure people aren't riding their bike on this. strange I don't quite get it <laughs> I mean like I hypothesized it but it is very steep even walking like this I'm having to pull the bike back so maybe like I said maybe that just is it kind of like a manufactured speed bump of sorts definitely not handicap accessible for that portion you've got a green lawn over here another Starbucks here and it says also a UPS store. I know I pointed out multiple Starbucks but trust me there are other dining options on campus. In fact that building there says Tuker House Dining so that might be another food court of sorts. And more and more bicycle options. Let's go ahead and cross the street. Well, I'm not sure where, <laughs> where I'm headed to now. Let me turn back around. It says motorcycle entrance. I want to keep on going if I can. Maybe the sidewalk over here weaves back to the left. Again, that's part of the unfamiliarity with where where I'm going. Actually, I think I came all the way by the football stadium so I must have driven quite a bit now let me check out Google Maps while I'm in the sun here oh yeah <laughs> so that's where I started the video where that mountain is and then mountain state mountain American Stadium all right so again far from a good tour of the university but what can you expect from a first time visitor just going through and trying it so now it says I'm three minutes away from Trader Joe's on the bike turn left on the East University Drive I think I cut myself off earlier, but my plan for the rest of Tempe is to try to look at Trader Joe's. Then if I have time, there's this one pizza place that I might give it a shot, but it's back the other way. So I probably may or may not film the ride going there. And then after that, then I want to head by the beach park that I showed earlier, but actually go closer to where the bike trail is and you got some nice park and river views all right where did it tell me to go now let's well, we're going to turn left here so we'll turn 
left initially. And I think I'm going to cross the street here. Just kind of ad living it quickly. From what I recall seeing on the map earlier. I believe it's on this side of the street, but if not, that's all right. Oh, I hear the railroad crossing, so I'm gonna stop back here in the shade. This is just that train I boarded earlier, so that's not gonna take long. You know, it's funny, I did unnecessarily cross the street. <laughs> it's going to end up being on the left side, the trader goes. This is the Walton Center for Planetary Health as part of ASU. And again, when you look at the map, it truly does almost seem like the downtown area of Tempe that 75% of it seems to be ASU related in some capacity. Bicycle is riding nicely, by the way. Unique street signs, I've never seen them like that where they go them embedded in the road work. So this is the mini shopping plaza. And I think Trader Joe's is contained within here. Let me get off the bike though because business area don't try not to ride in there no I'm heading the right direction these folks here have bags of Trader Joe's oh yeah I think that's part of another thing I got cut off on earlier it's a tradition of my brother and I when we would travel to always find a Trader Joe's because Typically, they have interesting artwork inside that symbolize the community. And plus, there's just several key items that I like shopping for, for snacks and such. There's one also in Phoenix, but since I was going to be in Tempe, I said, eh, I might as well go here. Now, I did when I did preview online, it seemed like there weren't the typical... Uh, merchandise, or sorry, typical murals that you would see for Trader Joe. That's all right. Let's see, I'm not used to this bike type of bike rack here. But we'll get it locked up and head inside. So next to where I parked the bike, there's Blick Art Materials. I gotta back up a little bit to actually see the sign for Trader Joe's. Got the cans on the wall in the shape of a clock. And you've got the Welcome to Trader Joe's ASU Tempe. And various other decorations. So, so far I've got my Nons, my brownie cookies, one banana, and trying to look. There's these 
new chocolate chip cookies, a bucket of them that I've been loving, like absolutely loving the taste of them. And I see them right there, there they are. These things are like so darn scrumptious. Way more chocolate chip cookies. All right, so leaving Trader Joe's now. I'm gonna head toward that pizza place called Otto, but I think it's gonna retread on some of the area that I went by earlier. So I'll see about that if it does. And unfortunately, we're heading toward the sun now. So I'm gonna cut the footage until I get to the, either the pizza place or determine that there's like something new to show. So as I was riding toward the pizza place, came across this on Arizona State University, kind of like, you know, a good picture. Sometimes you like to see the big Arizona State University sign. So I don't know if this is the biggest sign on campus or if there's other ones, but made for a nice picture. I actually, if you're wondering for perspective, Trader Joe's was that way, but that bridge that goes up there, that's the bridge I crossed earlier when I was exploring here and then I went over there and I eventually then continued on to Trader Joe's. So now I'm just coming this way and the pizza place is about a four minute bike ride still going this direction. So if you guys remember just by Mill Avenue earlier where that Chick-fil-A was, I just crossed Mill Avenue again past the Chick-fil-A. I see there's a Whole Foods market up ahead. There's actually a Blaze Pizza here. That sun is too bright for me to see. I don't know if the car is going to turn out. So let me, let me try to, oh, I guess he is going to try to turn out. It was literally, the sun was literally so blinding that I couldn't, even if I was staring at the guys, like the driver, I wouldn't be able to see if he was waving me on or not. But the reason I got off is because I'm trying to look at Google Maps. I think this pizza place is at the light right up here and to the left. It's called Otto's or Otto Pizza and Pastry. I see it now. So we're going to cross here and then make a left. So there's the Whole Foods Market along Ash Avenue and University. There's a bike rack right at this auto pizza. Just gotta wait for the light to change. Okay. Let's try out Otto Pizza and Pastry. Otto Pizza and Pastry. I asked about the pastries. They make little like pastries like cannolis and certain cakes at certain times of the year that they put in the fridge. Uh, but here's the pizza I got. I got one slice of cheese, slice of pepperoni, and since I haven't drank all day, literally, <laughs> uh, I got some lemonade. here so pizza was, was a th I did the combo like I said but individual slices would have been 329 for a cheese slice 379 for a slice with topping on it
what I'm going to try to do now is head toward the bike path or beach area. And it looks like Ash Avenue has dedicated bike lanes in the street. I'm going to give that a shot. So yes, we're riding down Ash Avenue now. We can see the bike path in the street. So imagine that the popular street that I walked down earlier with all the businesses, that would be the next street over to my right. Event parking, 20 bucks, I guess that beach event which is I think it was called like extra innings something is the way they're branding it but they had music and like former major league baseball players there I don't know if it's still going on I imagine it is but I couldn't find like the actual time of the event other than it was taking place yesterday and today couple more th oh yeah before I forget the pizza that I had tasted good it was you know solid pizza basically the type of pizza where when I ate it I, I never thought to myself like oh god you know I just ate it and I was, I was enjoying it but it's also not something I would be like going up to everyone being like oh you gotta try like auto pizza it was the best thing ever did the job it filled me up since I hadn't eaten I didn't want to be filming down here when it started getting nighttime just because of camera quality so that's why there's a few things where I had to scratch off the idea lists including the Tempe uh, what was it called? Is it called Market? It's it's like the area in Tempe where they have 100 stores and like just a boatload of like basically the main shopping district for bigger stores. Like I said, I scratched that off the list. And the other thing I sort of scratched was trying to look at residential areas street closed so let me I know they closed the cars I don't know if it's closed to cyclists I did want to get one more shot of that Tempe sign if I can. Earlier there were kind of like just too many people in the way so I didn't get to frame it how I would like to. I think that Tempe sign is just up ahead here. Hopefully that guy earlier who was <laughs> trying to bother me or bug me about sins and sinners isn't 
still there trying to harass harass people. I'll be like, dude, I'm just trying to just trying to take a picture here as a tourist. Yeah, the Extra Innings Beach Festival. I, it is a ticketed event, so that's why I'm not like exploring over there per se. I'm happy I got my I got my pictures in now. So the street is actually mostly blocked off to traffic. Dave Matthews Band is supposed to be one of the participants there. is kind of unique where you would be able to ride in the street here without worrying about any traffic but the issue like I said is that sunlight right now once we turn right up ahead or once we turn right up ahead it should uh block out the sun actually got blocked out now toward the left. You know, I think this part is actually open. So let's take a look down here. Maybe we'll get to the beach area and bike trail that I'm looking to get toward. <laughs> this person here on the right. Got a little doggy in the <laughs> front basket.
I would have access to all this stuff up here where all these people are walking, but that's part of the festival. So, we got to rethink this a bit. <laughs> I have a bell on it. sort of see through there the amount of people. I assume the bands are playing further on the beach. Center for the Arts. And I'm hoping we still have access to the bike path and maybe the festival is ended by this area. I don't know. So that part's still blocked off. See, almost any other day, this wouldn't have been an issue. I would have gotten to the bike path and been able to show what I was talking about. Now it, I sort of seem like a deer with a deer in the headlights. We'll figure it out. Maybe it's just around here. I think we finally have success over here. There we go. There's some pretty shots. Take a look at the mountain area, the water. And then this bridge. This is nice for, for some perspective shots as well. I'm actually going to stop right here because that's right on the verge of where the sun would be uh, peeking out going the other direction. So let me take this off tilt locked mode. So the whole beach area I was talking about is over there. It does look like they still have access to the uh, area where they allow you to rent boats out and such. Because that was another cool thing how that area over there is kind of a contained spot. Let me see, I forgot what they officially call that portion. Tempe Town Lake was the pedestrian image, but that's also the Town Lake. And this is the Salt River that we're going across. See the beautiful blue water. This is one of the first things when I was asking my brother to help me scout out Tempe. He found this spot right here and he's like, oh, there's a great spot. I'm actually going to back up a little bit because the sunlight is shifting for when I turn this way. I'm 
can see right there how the water stops and it's like barricaded off so it's I don't know I thought I thought it extended beyond it is this the salt river or am I mis mistaken forgive me I gotta balance everything Yeah, Google shows the Salt River continuing, so, but clearly you can see it like stops right there. Maybe it is dried up and this part's man-made. I don't know. And you can't see it right now, but in that direction is the giant Papago Park. So we're, we're right here where that blue dot is, and then up there, it's sort of like a big, the big city park where you've got the Phoenix Zoo, a great viewing spot called Hole in the Rock, the Desert Botanical Garden, Arizona Heritage Center, uh, Papago Golf Club. So it's all in one spot and it's, like I don't think it's visible right now, but imagine beyond that building, it's probably, you know, a big area of it. So that's something I might try to explore. I just have to, I mean, not today, but during this uh, trip. You can bike over to the other side and there's sort of a, the bike trail goes on both that end and this end. But if you want to continue toward Phoenix, which is the, the other direction, meaning this way, the trail only goes a little bit further, at least according to Google Maps, unless it, uh, Google Maps is missing it. And then you got to still cross back over to the side that I'm on now. So I didn't have a good ending spot for the video, but I did continue and bike ride on the bike trail. So be sure to check out that video, which will be uploaded separately, although it's going to be kind of tough to see in a lot of spots because of how dark and ended up getting quickly and the bike path wasn't so lit but at least the beginning portion will be enjoyable to see but if you liked this video exploring tempe arizona feel free to hit the like button subscribe if you haven't already and stay tuned to the rest of our phoenix videos we will see you next time